welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. Oh, I'm Larry. <laughs> this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Tonight we're gonna go all over the place, which is one of more more favorite shows for me. Uh, socially distanced, normal. I'm in the Midwest. Ross in the Northeast. Larry's in California. I'm assuming. Yes. Probably sh- probably should for, check that one ahead of time. <laughs> for for right now. <laughs> for right now, I was like, yeah. for the next hour. We know where Larry will be. <laughs> By the time this show comes out, he very well may not be, which is kind of how it seems. Uh, yeah, we're split always... again. We're back to East West. I would also say that's how most of our episodes occur, is that we get a mm. person to stay in place for one hour and then they move again. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's good when All it's of our country, guests travel. When it's country hopping, it's, it's exciting. Um, I get And you can add Larry to that list as well. Yeah, seriously. So... Usually, Chris and I talk about our own stuff. Um, we're going to table that for another <laughs> show because we have much, much more interesting stuff to talk about with Larry here tonight. Um, so, Larry, I don't think you need an introduction. Uh, Larry Chen, photographer, YouTuber, um, TV-esque personality, made an appearance. Kind of man of, of many uh, disciplines here. Um, and... Dabbling like deeply in the off-road world these days. Yeah, yeah, more and more. Um, it's something that we can't, <clears throat> excuse me, it's something we can't stay away from. It is, it's only natural, I feel like, for you to just get into that space if you're into cars in general in, in this time period. Um, it, it is a very exciting time. I just saw that. For example, the speaking of Land Cruisers, the new Land Cruiser the pricing mm-hmm. for the new yeah. Land Cruiser yep. got uh, fifty five in the door. Yeah, that's that's great. We watched the first one get made in Japan. Yes. I did want to talk about that. Yeah. So that was a point of fascination on the Toyota forums over mm-hmm. the last few weeks. Was your video really? from? Yeah, you, that video got posted like. More times than really? I can count. Yeah. Th- that um, makes me feel good because it's so funny because um, Toyota invited us to the Tahara factory. It's outside of Nagoya, which is in between uh, Tokyo and Osaka. The factory itself is very historic. It's been around for many, many years. Uh, they've made so many historic cars. A lot of forerunners. Um, just. I don't know, just a lot of vehicles that are, yeah, um, Prados, not the LC100 or LC200, but a lot of Prados, like two-door Prados, four-door Prados, um, Mm. GX, all the GX lines ever. Yep. Uh, Just so many vehicles. My beloved uh, truck came from there. I think pretty much all the forerunners all the way till this current generation. It's um, really incredible for... uh, for us to see this one factory build all of these vehicles and also on the same assembly line. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what was insane. But what's funny to me is that Toyota invited me out to document this thing, you know, just to show this off. And after they unleashed me out there, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, (laughs) <laughs> Stop posting all this good stuff, you know, uh, almost oh, like man. I'm revealing all of this stuff. Yeah. So then I, I just, I guess I got it out of my system, but then I was thinking to myself, like, do you even realize what you did? Mm-hmm. Why? Like, did, did you even <laughs> know who you were right. inviting to this factory? And it's interesting because I've been shooting cars and car culture for 20 years now, I've traveled the world. Oh, wow. This was my first time seeing a vehicle get assembled. And really? I, wow. Yes, yeah, I mean, you're first you're ever. Jumping first in the ever. deep end on that. That's like Re- yeah. a real and, high and bar, man. I just didn't realize, I didn't understand what it was like. And I didn't really understand how simple the process is and how Lego like these vehicles actually mm-hmm. are. Yeah, yeah. But it com- completely yep. makes so much sense mm-hmm. because that's the way that they can make money from building these very complex machines. Yep. yep. Uh, and I hope that came off in the video that we made. 
it, it was just really eye opening. I just didn't understand that that's just the way it is. And, and it makes sense how they're able to make money because they pump them out so quickly. Mm -hmm. They pump out one every minute, pretty yeah. much. Dude, it's so wild to go to factories and see them come off the line. Yeah, like it, especially something as complicated as a Land Cruiser too. Like it's not, it's yeah. not very simple. <laughs> um, and, and few things make you appreciate the actual craftsmanship that goes into assembling a Toyota product that came off that line than taking one apart yourself and trying to put it back together and it goes terribly awry. That's what I mean. You know, it takes, mm -hmm. I watch these craftsmen, like for, for example, one of the things that Toyota didn't want us to show so much is, you know, people hammering things to it, to spec mm -hmm. or people moving things to spec with brute force. So it's yeah. perfect. I'm mm -hmm. talking about all the doors aligning, hood, everything aligned to you yeah, the tolerances. Half, quarter quarter are... millimeter tolerance. Mm -hmm. And it's the same guys doing it. They've been doing it for however many years and they just have the eye for it. Yep. And they know exactly how much pressure they need, you know, for door alignment, everything. They didn't really want us to show that because maybe it's hard to convey that mm -hmm. that's what every single car ever in existence needs. For it to be perfect, right? Um, but what's crazy to me is they do this quickly, and we watched this vehicle built from essentially a couple pieces of metal over a couple days to a finished driving away vehicle. Uh, like every process, I think them putting in the dash, and I think, oh my god, what a nightmare! It would take us a week just to take that. Yeah, that I've taken the you dash know? off of my GX. <laughs> it oh. is. Like, and, and it, it goes down to the rabbit hole of, okay, so these engines come as a full engine. So that means there's an assembly line for the engine somewhere else. And then there's assembly line for just the alternator mm -hmm. at Denso or wherever the supplier. It just goes so deep. It goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And everything is so, it's amazing to me that everything has to work in unison for mm -hmm. these vehicles to get pumped out one every minute. And here's something I didn't get to talk to uh, talk about in the video that maybe was a good idea that I left out, but it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty, uh, it's, it's organized in a way, right? Where everybody has a workstation mm -hmm. and everybody has a job and they have this many seconds predetermined seconds of how long it should take to get this job done. And it, and it's down to the second. It could be like, okay, this guy's station, you only get the vehicle for 17 seconds. And then if you don't finish your job, then alarm goes off and there's like a map of the entire facility. You can see so-and-so Bob, Bob mm -hmm. son uh, from this station, station four is lagging which he's stopping the entire line. Oh man. Of like 250 cars, 300 cars on the line. Yeah. Bob San is the guy who stopped the line. The map of um, shame. <laughs> yeah, well, but what's or, interesting is then that's how they are able to figure out, okay, well, Bob needs more time. Mm -hmm. Or, hey, he keeps finishing in 15 seconds instead of 17. So let's give him only 15 seconds. Right. And then what's crazy is they have this six or seven buttons that they can press in case of emergency. Okay. And the buttons were, I'm just off the top of my head. One is bolt got stripped. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second button is bolt is lost in the chassis. Oh, my favorite. Okay. Three third button is like tools broken. So okay. you need to get another tool or something, mm -hmm. right? Uh, another one is like, I don't know. There's, there's just a bunch of different scenarios of, oh, oh one is injured, needs oh. needs help, you know, whatever, stop the line. Hopefully that's the, the biggest last, button. <laughs> the, la no, no, the last <laughs> one is toilet. Oh, oh seriously. The last one is you, hey. is you push that button, stops the entire line. Wow. 
toilet emergency. If we learn one thing from Jurassic Park, it's when you gotta go, you gotta go. So, <laughs> the, the entire time while we were there, the line always was getting stopped for some reason or another. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, it was because um, of the new two new vehicles that were going down the line that legitimately was the first time that the the people i guess i'm sure i'm sure they trained for months for this moment right. of the first car coming down the line um and they've had pre-production vehicles and whatever yeah. you know but not actual production vehicles so then the actual production vehicle came down the line and we saw time and time again uh oh boom 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 like they're hitting this thing it's mm -hmm. going in uh oh misaligned or or uh oh wrong bowl or whatever mm -hmm. you know so they're figuring it out for the first time interesting which is just so neat so interesting to see in real time and it was literally like 20 you you watch the video it's like 20 to 30 engineers following the entire line mm -hmm. the whole time and let me tell you another thing is I went with uh, Lewis, my second in command, and we were absolute, we were, like, we could not have been more complaining, uh, how can I put this lightly? <laughs> we, we, we were, like, looking at what they did, and we're like, oh, yeah, whatever, you work on assembly line. We were so not prepared for how harsh of environment and how hard it was to do that work mm. we were like really yes we were suffering we were struggling and part of it is because we have to wear these uh shoes that i guess they're just like the approved shoes mm. and for how much we had to walk i walk a lot like i right. walk so yeah, much i walk every move. day with all my camera gear but for us to carry all of our gear from station to station to follow the assembly line, follow that vehicle for two days on the factory floor, we were dead. Did you get like a... We, a we weren't complaining per count? se. Oh, I don't even know. It must have miles. been... Miles. I couldn't imagine how many miles it was because we would cross the line, then go back the other way, mm -hmm. cross the over the line this way and follow it. And it's like, okay... Now the car would go on an elevator and then we would have to go to this part to find it. It was so crazy. We just, and it was hot because it was in the middle of summer. Um, these guys wear these suits that have like fans that are personal coolers mm -hmm. that cool them down. But we didn't have that. We had all our camera gear and we had to have our safety gear on. Oh my God. We were just like suffering, but <laughs> we pushed through it. and. Both Lewis and I looked at each other and we're like, we give these individuals so much credit for what they're doing. It, it's it's really hard work and it's mm -hmm. honest work and they seem super passionate and they seem like they love what they do. And also they eat so fast because they want to get back to work. Yeah. We go to we went to the cafeteria, which by the way, honestly was probably my favorite thing ever. Um they uh <laughs> we went into the cafeteria and by the way, Toyota made us blur out all the pr prices for whatever reason. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't of know why. The things, of all the things. The, the, the food was so, so cheap. It was like basically free. Well, because they probably wholesale <laughs> purchase. Like they're like, yeah. we're going to feed the factory I today. Know. Like, I, I think, okay, I've read somewhere and I don't know if this is true or not, but essentially they're selling it so they're not losing money mm. it's just like how much it costs to get the food there right. um but but anyways i don't get why they didn't they didn't want us to show it because i think it's so cool that it's a you know you you can leave you can mm. leave if you want and get lunch somewhere else but why wouldn't i want to get a bowl of ramen for literally two dollars or something you know right. it, it was so ridiculously cheap both Lewis and I had three lunches each day. <laughs> I mean, very, you wonder very, why you like, were struggling so much walking around American your stuff. <laughs> mentality of we wanted to try as much as we could. Oh my god, it was so good. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, it was just such an eye-opening experience, and I I could see why 
we haven't had the opportunity yet with other manufacturers because of course there is a lot of sensitive stuff mm -hmm. but um it's just it's just such a process and i think toyota out of all the manufacturers they're very um candid about the fact that the, their processes of the whole kaizen thing you know they anybody is allowed in that factory uh actually before the shutdown you could schedule tours every single day Wow. Unfortunately, since the shutdown, they haven't had a chance to revamp that program or bring them back. But they had just anybody that wanted to see how a Toyota was made, they would mm -hmm. take them through the factory. And I think that is so, so neat. I think that's so cool. That Yeah, that is, I mean, that shows a, a level of passion and care for what they're doing. Uh, there's a reason companies like Tesla are, you know, just throwing out free tours to everybody um yeah but that's that's another, another thing i found out that i thought was really interesting is um uh for example like a, a trd model they would try to get the like a trd forerunner as close as possible with as many parts as possible at the factory mm -hmm. but there were so many things that just didn't make it onto it when it actually rolled it off the assembly line mm. one big one is the wheels yes i've so seen what, yeah so many pictures at port of steelies of the spare steelies yeah. so what they tell me is they don't even i think for toyota um at least for the forerunner they just use the stock standard wheels mm -hmm. and once they're shipped to wherever they go, I'm assuming most of them were going to the U.S. Once it was, once it's in port, once it gets to the U.S., that's when they swap them out. Yep. But it, it is such an interesting thing. If you look at the Tahara factory on Google Maps, uh, they have everything um, from the actual vehicle assembly plant. And then as soon as they collect enough cars in this area, it almost looks like an elevator. They staging have like 20 cars in there, staging spot. area. Yeah. The door opens, 20 cars go out at the same time and they all drive to the port. And the port is just right there. They mm -hmm. load up the vehicles and they just get shipped off to America. That's it awesome. is so cool because I personally have a vehicle out of that factory. The FJ. Um, well, I don't know if the FJ Cruiser was made there. But I have a GX, a, a 2022 GX 460. It's, right. it's a family vehicle. And I saw many of that spec on the line still. We mm -hmm. watched, as you can see when you watch the video, uh, the Haggerty episode, we watched the last GX 460 ever get made, ever. I know. I was um, watching the video and looking out the window at my 460, and I'm like, oh, yeah. oh it's so we, nice. We watched the last one last one and who knows maybe last va i don't know but at least of that generation and then one thing they that uh, toyota asked us to take out is that when they had the two chassis together um the computer didn't recognize the new chassis next hmm. to the 460 chassis so there was like an error message and they manually had to let it go through the dipping process oh wow but but the <laughs> thing is they wanted to save this is what blows me away. They didn't even want to 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 waste the time of having another jig. Like it didn't. It wasn't an even number. It wasn't mm -hmm. like okay, two two four sixties came in, and then now it's two uh, LC two fifties or two yeah 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 or GX five fifty whatever. It was. It just happened to be an odd number, and they're like, okay, well, we can't waste that jig to save time. Mm -hmm. So they just like manually force it through to have a full jig. Hmm. Oh That's my God. Cool. I That's mean, how cool. much time are they saving at that point? You know, so because you watch the jigs go through the dipping process and it's just as fast as the cars are leaving the line. It's whatever one, every, I don't know, 50 seconds or 60 right. seconds. Or whatever. That's crazy. Um, yeah. Just for a, a correction on myself, uh, the FJ came out of the Hamara plant. Okay. So I yeah, was so, fact checking and incorrect on my own uh, my own statement for, but this century is made there too. Really? 
Yeah, the sentry is made there um, at a different section of the plant, so we didn't get a chance to see that. But man, you you they literally unleashed the nerdiest people there. I mean, we they they didn't even understand. Like they couldn't process. They're like, what? Why are you interested in this thing? And I'm hmm. like, you don't understand <laughs> this welding wire that has to travel a kilometer or whatever you know (laughs) to make it to the actual machine that's welding i i i just couldn't believe it i was like this is so cool and for for how complicated this machine is it's amazing to me what what they've been able to accomplish and that's that's just what i love about cars it it really opened my eyes completely so Speaking of the uh, nerdy factor, the um, the inquiring minds on I Hate Mud are curious, and hopefully this is something you can actually say or not, but the 250, the GX550, and the 5th Gen 4Runner, they're all coming off of the same production line? I don't know about anything other than the 250, uh, or LC250. We just saw the LC250 chassis okay. there. That's all 100%. Okay. <laughs> and that's the problem is they probably don't want me to see any more than that. I'm you know sure I mean? not. <laughs> There's a reason that's all you <laughs> like, saw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, we, we uh, they were pretty careful in terms of like what we were able to see. But I mean, there were still so many things that were just uncovered. Uh, I am assuming a lot of LC250 um the toyota land cruisers that were like pre-production that were kind of like taken apart mm-hmm. or whatever we had a chance to see all that and um yeah we just it, it, it was just so cool to be able to see both of them come down the line for the first time and it was such a big event and that's the whole entire reason why we were there the whole entire Perfect. reason was to watch this first one get yeah. built that was at the gx550 was actually before the the Toyota hmm. LC250. Like it, was, well, it was like a couple vehicles before. Dude, I'll tell you the the envy that was uh, flowing across, you know, myself and the rest I, of the Toyota guys is it's so that must yeah, have been I'm pretty glad. fucking cool to see. I'm so so glad yeah. that it worked. You know, their idea mm-hmm. was to create some FOMO and create some buzz around this vehicle that is getting produced and it worked. Uh, us nerds, you know, all of us, um, we we just get excited about those kind of things. And man, did it work! I I'm I just I wish more manufacturers would be into this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I it makes me want to go see the GR Corolla and GR yes. plant. Yeah. You know, it makes me want to see, yep. or even like the r35 plant right now i want to see that would what be an that experience looks like, you know because yeah. there's a, those have a lot more hand-built aspects to to it yep which who knows i mean it, it the, might just that be a might not happen experience, you know? much longer yeah i feel like the r35 isn't that the one with like the hat i'm gonna Hyperbolic. use the wrong word but yeah, it's like yeah. a safe room or whatever where they build the engine or something. Yeah, I think because I think they run the the engines at Redline for ten minutes or something. Good um, lord! And I think it's not it's not something where it's like one every sixty seconds gets made. I think the R thirty five, from what I've heard from my Nissan contacts, is it's one a day. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So well, they've I don't been doing know. one a day for fifteen years, or <laughs> no longer than know. that. Sixteen yeah, yeah, years. Yeah. I don't know. So, um, Ross, real quick to your kind of question about Forerunner. I went through like the, because this is how nerdy I get about it. I'm like, let me look at the platform because mm-hmm. yeah. it's the the GA, right? Or the, yeah, T-N-G-A-F. everything's based. Yeah. Yeah. So it's B, C, F, K, and L. Not nerdy. All of the all things that. we like, all of the things we like are on F platform mm-hmm. um, because that's, Land Cruiser, Land Cruiser Prada, which is the LC250, Sequoia, Tundra, and the LX. Yep. The GX isn't listed right now, but it has to be there because the Prado's there, and it's the same size as the 250. Yeah. The only other platform that would be similar is the K platform, and that's Grand Highlander and Lexus TX and regular Highlander. Well, but those are 
but they're those are body on unibody right? or no, 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 right. I mean, those aren't body off right yeah, yeah those they're are all unibody, unibody. Yeah. right yeah. so that's why i think it'll be the f platform so that's why i think we're gonna and the spy shot that we've kind of seen is like the new forerunner looks a little bigger than what we're used to in a forerunner oh, I, so you're theorizing they're going unibody no, I think oh. it'll be body on frame, but the body on frame size they have is all of the bigger stuff. Gotcha. I don't think gotcha. it'll be gotcha. down on the unibody stuff like the the TX, even though the Grand Highlander's larger than a Forerunner. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. I, I the Probably. spy shots I mean, have looked robust to me in size, and that could just be it's, cladding or whatever. But like, it looks hefty. My, my <laughs> you never know with these spy shots because they could add extra body panels to throw yeah. people off too, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, my speculation is a uh, fourth gen Tacoma with a uh, boxed in bed and, you know, possibly a third row. Hopefully the manual. Unlikely, but that, that would be cool. I, I really love the fact that a manual comes out with a new Tacoma. Like that is mm -hmm. just so ridiculous that, and it would be awesome if there was a way to, if if uh, I'm assuming it's it's probably going to be possible, but to to crack the ECU on that one would be cool. I, mean, I hopefully it's same the same thing as like the 2020 Supra, mm -hmm. um, where that was the first one and it was the easiest to crack. You know, mm -hmm. it was the easiest one to modify. Uh, for me to have like a street truck like that, you could build like a modern X runner so oh. easily. Up the boost, man. Six speed manual, um, man. That would be super, super, super God, cool. Have you yeah. seen the prices on a good X runner recently? They went from like no. eight grand to like twenty to twenty five oh, for a good X runner over the last eighteen months. Ugh, Killing me. That is ridiculous. Killing me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, I, I'm so glad that you guys are such big Toyota nerds. I am. I am so, the biggest Toyota nerd. I just love. The, the what what the brand stands for mm -hmm. and i just that one yeah the x runners but, are nuts yeah but in blue <laughs> but the blue is the one to get um, yeah, yeah the, well, the so, blue one. Mm -hmm. larry you're you're one of the um one of the few representatives in the like automotive media that is seemingly pretty not diehard but but toyota leaning which is interesting because and here's I, my... I'd say he splits Toyota and Nissan pretty Toyota well. Toyota and Nissan, yeah. Well, <laughs> and maybe some P-Car stuff. But um, my, we've been doing this show for over 200 episodes. Segway is that you just spent some time with the ultimate of Toyota nerds with our buddy Kurt out at the Heritage Museum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kurt the is 250. great. Yeah, yeah. Kurt is great. We, uh, uh, I, I actually had a chance to see him not too long ago uh, at the Baja 1000 um, because they work with uh, the Joust. Joust, yeah. yeah. Running the yeah. 300. Oh, my God. That is... I I wish... Every time I go to Japan, man, I see those 300s running out, and I'm like, that's the one. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh, have you guys been seeing the FJ company stuff that I've been shooting? Yes. So, so... Um, I have... I was even thinking about this today, okay? Like, I I have uh, four Toyota body-on-frame vehicles, right? So I have the GX460, my daily driver is the LC200, um, and oh. uh, I have the FJ, you know, manual FJ yep. supercharged, and also I have the wide-body Tundra. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've been... Have, I've had a chance or many mul multiple chances in the past couple uh, months to drive this uh, like a GRJ70 Land Cruiser. <sighs> and, you know, I drove I drove one recently in Hong Kong and I drove a bunch in Colombia. Mm -hmm. um, and my buddy Opposite Nelson. Opposite of the world. Yeah. From, from, <laughs> yeah. Well, because guess what? They're not allowed in the U.S. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. So, but then my That's buddy it. Nelson from the uh, FJ company, he's importing them. Uh, brand new 2022 mm -hmm. GRJ70 Land Cruisers to Florida, uh, and I did a video on this. Um, it's because he's frame swapping them oh. 
he's legally frame swapping them. Yeah. With like 80s, early 80s, uh, 70s series, FJ70s. Stuff that's legal. And, well, the reason why is because the frame hasn't changed. Nothing has changed. Uh, and and I, I, there's some like gray area or there's some kind of rule where if the vehicle hasn't changed for this many years, it doesn't matter. It's the same vehicle. Literally, you right. have no, you don't change anything. You take the body <laughs> yeah. and then you drop it on the frame and it's the same. It's exactly That's... the same. So, and I could, I'm going to apologize because I think I have this wrong. He's taking new GR chassis, but putting old body trucks on it. No, 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 Vice no, no, versa. No, no. no. He's taking the only thing that matters, the legal. Okay, the VIN plate is not <laughs> yeah. even on the body. The VIN yeah. plate is on the frame mm -hmm. on, okay. a, on a 70 series Land Cruiser. Okay. So, therefore, he just takes the new body, new engine, new running gear, new suspension, everything, and he just puts it on the old chassis mm -hmm. that is re refreshed, like a refreshed, Dude. dipped everything chassis. And then, so it's basically two vehicles in one and he sells it in the u.s can, and he's sold many of them already can and you I imagine thinking, go ahead Larry. i keep thinking i should just bite the bullet and buy one they're I mean, so how, cool how much are they dude so that's a dead end if it's it's You're fully that. decked out um with magnuson supercharger reverse camera all the bells and whistles it's about one hundred fifty thousand u.s Okay, but okay. in the world of Icon and... I was to say, the rest like, of his stuff is like 250 yeah. something so that seems and cheap. <laughs> listen to this. Listen to this. Fully factory one with nothing. Nothing. All cloth seats, everything. Bought 100000 What motor? Uh, with with uh, uh, one GR. With a stock, brand new, zero mile, 2022 hmm. one GR. And he gets them... He gets he gets the ones the donor cars from the Middle East, hmm. and okay. the reason why I explain this in my video, okay? The reason why he's able to do it in Colombia is because he does it in a free trade zone, Ooh. which means the car reaches Colombia and they do all this work for it, but it's like it never left. Uh, UAE. Right. It's like the duty-free oh, version yeah, of Colombia. Loopholes. Yes. 100% yes. <laughs> complete well duty-free duty-free zone, yep. which means it's not technically and never even got imported to Colombia. Hmm. So then he gets these Colombia market ones, which there are so many uh, for the 80s uh, or like 1980s or 1990s FJ70 chassis. And then he just has like a bunch of those and then he just keeps importing new grj 70s and yeah it's it's the coolest thing i'm so stoked that he's doing it and it's so cool like he has a bunch that he just drives in florida that mm -hmm. are his personal ones too have you driven one and yeah so i drove that one okay and uh, tell us in, in full transparency how do they drive like are we talking like <laughs> feels more modern than like a, a you know a zj or a wj grand cherokee it, or it, it it's it is what it is, which is a um, like a very rugged off road vehicle, mm -hmm. um, and it's more built for a country like Colombia, where a lot of times there's just no roads. Right. Um, so it is. It does feel like a truck, body on frame <laughs> truck. You know, it's a it's a little bouncy. It's uh, but that's just the way it's supposed to drive. Yeah. It drives. Those like decals a dream bike. Are I so freaking good. absolutely love it so much. Manual five speed with a supercharger. That one. Oh, that's awesome. Is like an absolute dream car. The only thing, there's only one complaint, if I can have one complaint at all. <laughs> okay. My only complaint is that uh, this whole system, uh, the 2022 GRJ FJ70, never had cruise control. Oh, uh, what? And yeah, and there's no, it has hill, hill start assist. Okay. That one. It has ABS. It has traction control. Mm -hmm. 
it has like a lot of bells and whistles Dude, that, what it does so not weird. have what it does not have is cruise control even though my fj with the 1gr fe has cruise control i feel like you could there's somebody's got to retrofit ah, that i don't know maybe i mean i asked the the experts there um because they these individuals these colombians grew up with land cruisers that's right. all they do right they live breathe and they just work on land cruisers so that one you see in the in that video that's a frame swap one. Oh, this wow. one that's yeah awesome. it's the, the tan it's, one yes it's Dude. it's just a legal thing it's lit the fr frame is the same thing it's literally the exact same thing and, and so it it drives like a new vehicle it is essentially a new vehicle yeah. that's a um, game but, over you know like there's nowhere to go from there ah oh, it's so cool but of course now what you're looking at is something that is a, basically about three times the cost of a new yeah yeah you know? and it's like can and you the actually... new one has cruise control <laughs> no, no, no 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 i mean i mean a new one of that 2022 yeah. version right. you know so, <laughs> you know the new one doesn't come in manual so the new one, which I had a chance to see in Japan uh, this last trip, um, I had a chance to see the new one next to that $12,000 crazy. Oh, that little pickup truck. thing? Yeah, the little pickup oh, thing. Oh, so which, cool, that thing. Could you imagine how much of a killing Toyota would make if they were able to sell those? They wouldn't. In a world where the cheapest pickup in America you can buy right now is a Ford Maverick, which is 30 Selling grand. like hotcakes. Yeah. <laughs> they would sell those so twelve thousand dollars, no headliner, no problem. Uh, it's no dude, a side by there's side. Not is twenty five even... grand for something that can do what that thing can do. So the the sheet metal that uh, is behind you when you're sitting down on, on this bench, you know, it's what separates. Well, it's the, the bed, other side. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, no fabric or anything. It's just sheet metal. Uh, and I and I just look at this thing. And I'm like, it's so basic, but it's what people need. Mm -hmm. Twelve thousand dollars for that yeah. thing, you know, and it's what so people cool. can actually afford. Just, <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, um, it it just makes it honestly makes too much sense. Yeah, it's, it's so cool, dude. Those things are. I, so I mean, awesome. I it's kind of ugly, but it has a certain charm to it. You know, it's a it's little so cyberpunky. Yeah. It's got a bit if of a, told, like a Bane face going on. If you told me it was in the first Judge Dredd with Stallone, I'd believe it. <laughs> but yeah, the new mm -hmm. 70 series is super cool. I think it looks great. I love the the way the hood looks and everything. A lot of people don't like it. Yeah. Um, the manual thing, I don't know. I I don't. I I obviously like manual trucks. I think it's the greatest thing ever. It's so much fun to drive. Uh, my FJ, I think, is probably the most fun thing to drive um, because even though it's still, it has a Magnuson supercharger, it's still slow enough where I can pretty much floor it everywhere. Mm. Yep. That's yeah. the right kind of, uh, right kind of manual experience. Yeah. It's so much fun. Yeah, I know. We don't, I don't, I don't want to live with something that is like needlessly fast, but yeah, stick shift where you can actually like come off clutch and just put your foot down until you're close to red line and not worry about, Going to jail or dying is kind of fun. That's good. Um, but can you imagine talking about how modern that truck, the Land Cruiser that you were just talking about feels? Can you imagine if, like, somebody was doing that with, like, a GM, like a K5 or something, you know? It would feel sketchy at best. Mm, what do you mean? Like putting like, a new Tahoe body on top of a K5 Blazer <laughs> body, like or like yes. K5 Blazer chassis, like well, but or the even chassis is not the same, right? The that's even, the difference. Yeah, even yeah. a 2023, 2024, like Tahoe. Uh, anyways, yeah, I, I'm saying it's remarkable <laughs> that they're doing that, and it's still, it, it doesn't feel like you're driving something from the 40s, you know, because yeah, that slinky effect with time. It, it just sucks that the, the, the 25 year rule that we have to deal with in the U S sucks so much. Um, it, it's funny how much it's shaped car culture mm -hmm. in the U S I mean, like the whole Nissan skyline thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We always wish we were Canadians. Maybe. 
yeah, maybe they it wouldn't be as crazy if it didn't have such a such a like a delayed start. Mm-hmm. You know, twenty five years yeah. is so long. If we have had if we had had those cars here for ten years already, mm-hmm. like the rate of pace that that kind of culture would have picked up would have been astronomical. Oh, yeah. 100%. And, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it could have gone better for car enthusiasts or worse or whatever. Personally, I think it would have been better because people would be able to uh, experience them easier, mm-hmm. maybe. Now, there's there's just not as many, and then now it's like all of a sudden a rush for everyone to get them. And know? everything's so, crazy expensive because it's just time. so ridiculous. Yeah. yeah it's so um, expensive. And it's all for nothing. Like, of all the things for the government to care about, that national security 25 yeah. versus 15 year old cars, like, why is that important? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Jeez. But uh, yeah, so, I mean, speaking of foreign stuff you've you've really been prowling the earth doing car stuff all over the place i mean you were in thailand japan milan australia where else have you been um we we just launched a a season premiere of uh caption car culture um on the haggerty youtube channel uh just this last week uh we did a series in hong kong showing how oppressive it is to be a car enthusiast uh, I'm so happy with how that came out. Um, that's it's a three part series, and part one came out, and it's doing really well. Um, I think it's at half a million or, or damn over half a million views. I don't know. Yeah, four four eighty eight, four eighty eight. So that's good. Should, should hit half a million <laughs> soon. That's amazing. Um, it's 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 just so cool for me to be able to explore all of these. We were so neutered during the shutdown because I couldn't do anything. You know, I, I just, I, I, I was just beside myself. I didn't even know what I could do because what we love to do is tell stories all mm-hmm. over the world. Car culture is not just in the U.S. It's huge in the U.S. and it's obviously incredible to shoot in the U.S. But it's a worldwide thing that you just can't hold back. And all of these things that we're shooting every single day is proving that time and time again. Uh, Hong Kong is a very good example where they don't have those crazy import laws that like we have because you you can't get a domestic vehicle. The vehicles were never right. made there, right? right. So, so everything they is allowed. An yeah, everything sorts. is imported. So yeah. they allowed everybody to import these vehicles, but to enjoy them is a different story. And that's mm-hmm. kind of the story that we wanted to tell. Um, yeah, we, we've been shooting in, in Southeast Asia a lot. We shot in Indonesia last year too, which, um, again, huge, I think the population is like fourth, I think either fourth or fifth in terms of how many people live there. Mm -hmm. And, um, the car culture has been something that is, has been kind of overlooked, um, for a long time, but it is huge Mm -hmm. and it's getting bigger and the proximity to japan helps because they just look up to the japanese car culture so much but the stories that come out one of them which i haven't had a chance to talk about or uh uh, there wasn't really a way for me to tell the story without getting this person in trouble um (laughs) essentially this individual smuggled the r34 gtr through the jungles oh my god uh just to get it into the country because they're not allowed to import any used vehicles or parts. So no used engines, no used wheels, no used transmissions, no used cars ever. Wow. That is at uh, all. Not uh, very environmentally so friendly. <laughs> the, yeah. So, yeah. So, so the vehicles that are in there are in there, mm-hmm. but there's ways to get them in there. And smuggling them through the jungle is one way to do wow. that. That is. What, and, and, I was just say, what's the name of a jungle car smuggler? I know we have coyotes in like the yeah. American Southwest, but like, 
what are the, it can't be like El Tigre, but like, it's gotta be something. Yeah. <laughs> Just talk about the, the, the Great Lakes, you know, yeah. and, and you can't it say. really, not allowed to say what the name is. We're, we're, we're um, <laughs> in California, we're pretty restricted compared to the rest of the country, but in reality, we're not at all mm -hmm. compared to many of the places that I travel to, including Italy. You know, people don't realize Italy is the land of Sparco, Momo, yep. uh, Lamborghini, Ferrari. Uh, I mean, the yeah. craziest parks, craziest race cars, Dallara. Um, Some of the most Pagani. important automotive name plates yeah, and brands. You, you think, period. Yeah, you think like, that's it. Exactly. You think of automotive manufacturers, it, you know, the big ones come out is that the US, uh, Japan, um, Germany, mm -hmm. um, France, UK, and Italy. Obviously, I'm forgetting so many, but those are the major ones, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. And then come to find out, like, we, I've traveled to Italy a couple of times before, but I've never just purposely gone to. Lamborghini, mm -hmm. Dallara, Ital Design, um, all of these uh, very historic, very uh, influential, influential uh, names. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've never actually gone through what I guess what they call is kind of like Motor Valley, which is northern Italy mm -hmm. near Milan and Turin. Um, I didn't understand how difficult it was for these individuals to play with cars. If you're truly wealthy then there is a gray area and there's kind of workarounds, mm -hmm. um, which I met a lot of wealthy individuals that they just, they just have kind of like a dealer plate, you know, and, and it's like they have a dealership and they have all their cars under dealer plates mm -hmm. and what a, what a crappy workaround, you know, yeah. it, it just sucks that the normal individual, they aren't able to, play with cars on the same right. level and, and it's 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 also crazy to me because the most amount of resto modded and um i guess there's no other way to put it but like a singer type rebuild mm -hmm. or reimagine reimagine there's so many in italy there's so many there's like seven or eight mm -hmm. or more maybe that i don't know about you know we 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 went there and we shot with uh these individuals um that uh, uh, automobile Amos who rebuilds Lancia Delta Integrales mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Chimera who, who builds the Lancia 037s. And we went to Totem who builds these Alphas GTs from just uh, like just the VIN plate. <laughs> Nothing else is, <laughs> everything else is just custom made mm -hmm. in a factory and and for me to be able to see these individuals these craftsmen the the stuff that we saw this last trip absolutely i just cannot believe things are still being done this way mm -hmm. in this high level and uh the the whole it, it makes sense to me like the reason why Italy as a country and the, the people there and the reason why they've done so much to influence car culture over time is because they have this mentality. It, it is so forward thinking. And so many of these people that I met were way younger than me that really? are on the absolute forefront of hmm. Here's this new carbon technology that we figured out that we're building a chassis from. Or, hey, I'm, we just 3D printed this thing uh, that we're casting. And it's it just, yeah, it, it, I could not believe it's the, what uh... I was seeing. And, and the best part is, this happens to me everywhere I go. I always get surprised. Mm -hmm. I'm never like, Eh, this is what I expected. Kind of cool. You have okay cars. I'm going to go home now. This is fine. It's, it's yeah. never like that. Because the people like you and me, there's all these people that are just like you and me mm -hmm. in all of these countries. 
that put just as much effort into what they're doing as what we're doing. Yep. And yeah. cars are what pull it all together, but individuals Crazy. have stories and yeah, it, it makes things interesting regardless of how similar and monotonous things can seem. But yeah, this, yeah. this show that I have with Haggerty is pretty much a dream situation for me. Uh, I I've said this in a lot of my content, but what I'm doing is I'm redoing a lot of these stories that I've done just in print or mm -hmm. in vlogs or, or not vlogs, uh, print or blocks or still photography only or magazine. And I, and I found out about this culture and I found out about this special thing and I've always kept it in the back of my mind. And now what I'm doing is I'm redoing a lot of these stories that I did a long time ago up to even, I don't know, 15 years ago, I'm redoing these stories, but properly the way I want to do it mm -hmm. with video, with stills, uh, and very, very focus very curated we spend so much time on each episode like we take about two weeks per episode to edit them. jesus and we it, it's just because it matters that much to me to be able to tell the right story mm -hmm. and uh on top of that this has given us a platform to tell new stories and i've just never ever had an experience like this where Haggerty comes to me and they're literally they don't know what's going to be published on their channel until it's uploaded to their channel. Wow. Like they have no idea Man, what's coming. That is they don't know where I'm literature. traveling to. They have no idea where I'm going to be in the world. They have no idea what story I'm going to tell. They really don't have a say. I guess they don't really care because, because of how much we care mm -hmm. about right. telling the right yeah. story. You know, so um, because of all of the experience and all the contacts that I've made over this period of time, I'm so lucky that I get to have these, this access, this exclusive access to these stories. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's the greatest thing. It's so yeah. good. It's, it's really changed the way that we operate and the way we shoot. Um, this is because in the, mm -hmm, go no, I, I was just going to say that this is, you know, so many people in automotive media claim to be automotive journalists and they just write car reviews. And mm -hmm. I take full, you know, accountability on on claiming myself to have been that for a long time. But uh, but what you're doing is the actual like journalism in the sake. There's of more the... journalism in what you're doing than car yeah, reviews. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, there there's a place for both of them, though. That's Absolutely, the of, sure. You know, but this is like there's a place for both of them. The reporting and the storytelling in in the instance of what you're doing is very different from just like review stuff and I, you know, yeah, pointing I, fingers I, at I myself really, here, you know, I appreciate that so much. Um, and, and very candidly, like the editorial stuff, like Haggerty, the magazine stuff that we still do, um, pretty much. And even my own YouTube channel, we, we just love doing it. That's what, is something that we strive to do and enjoy and it's, it's the best it's so much fun what we do for work like work work is is the stuff that we do for the oems and it's all the stuff that we do for toyota for nissan for ford so on and so forth that's what pays the bills mm -hmm. but that's not while it is fun still it's not really for our soul yeah, you know, it's not a soul. project we, we like to shoot amazing racing, amazing builds, good stories, meeting new people, making friends, traveling the world. You know, mm -hmm. it's like that, that's the, that's really the spice of life. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the best part to share. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That's the part that's the most intriguing to me. I, no offense to all of our friends who do, do car review stuff. I don't, I don't watch any of it. I sorry, Ross. I don't read your stuff when I post it. Like, it's all, it's I, <laughs> I don't um, mainly because I can't I, afford that stuff. But I care about people. I care about people's stories mm -hmm. in those scenarios. Like that's the part I want to learn about. Like, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, it's it's great. It's 
it's too much fun for us. And, you know, doing a lot of this stuff though, on our own, um, it is giving us the credibility for the OEMs and that's what really matters to us, you mm -hmm. know, uh, be, because we really do care and, and we're very, very positive. Um, it, over the years, I've just learned that it just makes so much more sense to be positive, as positive as possible about cars and car culture, you know, because mm -hmm. of how passionate these people are, you know, e even though, even if we do come across something that is absolute trash, we either avoid it or just look at the positives mm -hmm. or look at the story behind it. Maybe it's trash because that's all that this individual could afford. And he's working his way up to, or she is working their way up to getting it to where they want it mm -hmm. or where it becomes something that's special. You know, there's yep. always some way to, to yeah. get to a point where it, it is an interesting story to tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, in the same vein and not to, uh, to beat the review portion of automotive life to death, but like I approach cars in there's something positive to find in every single car you know whether it was the first prius i drove in like 2008 when it was the coolest thing for everybody to do to just dunk on the prius like no it was efficient and did its intended job perfectly you know it's a it's a bleak world out there so you know it's like the stuff you're doing and and you know, some, some of the other Haggerty stuff and some of our other automotive friends, the, uh, trying to find some light in this is, it's, it's good. It's, it's very much needed. Yeah. I mean, we're honestly just making content that we would enjoy to watch, you know, because when I was growing up, I would watch TV and besides, uh, uh, like there's just only s such little amount of content. We didn't have cable. And we, we didn't have speed TV or anything. Mm -hmm. And anytime I got to somebody's house, I would, if, if somebody else, like a friend's house that had speed, I would be like, oh my God, you, you could turn this on. And then there's racing. Yep. Yeah. There's racing yep. on right now. And it just blew me away. You know, Off road racing too. Aside from just watch. Yeah. Aside from watching the occasional NASCAR or IndyCar on NBC sports or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it it was just, it was, uh, you're, you're really, you had to torrent stuff. Yeah. I, I don't know. If we all stole Top Gear. That. Street Fire. Yeah, well, we all it was, stole it. We had it was Street, Street, Street Fire. Fire first, and then it was torrent. Street Fire yeah. was bigger than YouTube. Dude, Street Fire. <laughs> I remember Street watching Street Fire. Drag Race, like, actual yes. street racing videos on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, we couldn't have gone enough of that. Like, I feel like at one point, all of us consumed all of the good automotive content that existed on the internet. Probably. Like, it's like, oh, you saw that video? Yeah, yeah. I saw the video too. It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, that was it, you know? Yeah, that, that, uh, so unintentionally molded yeah. a lot of what our, you know, our, our, our hobbies and passions are. Um, crazy. It's crazy. That was probably 20 years ago, that stuff. It's yeah. Wild. I was still in my twenties twenty years ago, so <laughs> uh, I was, You were not Ross. No, I was fourteen. You were in middle school. <laughs> yeah, I was fourteen. Um Yeah, so crazy stuff. So uh yeah, Larry, so so the FJ is still kicking, the Tundra. The Tundra was like a was that a copart build? Yeah, okay. It was copart. Yeah. Salvage title. The uh, first time you talked about the Tundra was with us, actually, forever. Oh, really? Ago. That was yeah. the first. Did I give it, did I, did I you, give it away? That or? was the first you time were like, you mentioned it to, like, media of any sort. Yeah, you were like, hey, really? guys, I've got this project coming up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, it, uh, it it's evolved now, yeah. now since then. It's, I think it's – I built the wildest thing I could build. I, I, it, at, up until that point um, – even now, I, I haven't really had one where I, I, I did the whole paint and everything. You know, mm -hmm. I did everything. Cut the body. It is such a wild vehicle. Um, I just did a trip um, with Steph Papadakis where we did the Mojave Trail in one day. 
And and what was and, uh, Steph driving? He was driving his Rav Four. I was to say he always said that's all he's got. Yeah. It's, uh, he was driving his Rav Four, but I, for the so listeners, it's, like, it's, it's a big. Yeah, it's a yeah, two door, just big size difference. Yeah, two door Rav Four from that, the nineties. I didn't understand that that is uh, um, 3S GTE swapped, uh, which is uh, the Toyota Caldina engine, um, and also the same thing as like the. Celica. It's like a GTS, yeah. maybe. Well, but it 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 is like an actual JDM motor that he has in there, and that car, what a funky car! I've never seen somebody clutch kick an off road vehicle, but that's like <laughs> what he has to do <laughs> because it doesn't have low range. Mm-hmm. For him to do the things that I do in my Tundra, I just slip it into low range, and I and with the thirty sevens. On real beadlock <laughs> tires. Oh, yeah. That's, what was that? That was my clip son. of somebody. That was my son. That was my son driving his RC car into uh, Steph's son. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. He got yeah. destroyed. Well, yes. Yeah, so yeah, like... he, did. he did. And what's funny is Steph's the one who put that in the video. Like, I, I just happened to get that clip. <laughs> that's amazing. You won't live that, I, that 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 clip was from my helmet cam. Like was it really? Cam. Oh, that's so. <laughs> yeah, I just happened to be rolling. Oh, but anyways, um, so good. It was such a fun thing. Steph likes to really push the limit. Um, he drives that thing, and, and as you guys saw, in this versus that. Yeah, he drives yeah. that thing. You don't say. Oh my god, it's just so crazy. But yeah, um, I have the new two point six liter Magnuson supercharger in the tundra now um it makes about 500 wheel horsepower god uh which is great uh we tow with it we tow my enclosed trailer open trailer it's such a good tow vehicle has 37s um barely rubs at full lock but most of the time when we're driving and when we're not having to do three-point turns and stuff doesn't run Mm -hmm. but uh um yeah Full wide, full wide body fiberglass yeah. body that is only two inches narrower than the than the Raptor of that generation. Okay, um, so so it's that's it's, wide. That's I mean, what I wanted to do was build a a, a Raptor ra- competitor yeah, yeah, yeah. of that generation, Raptor Tundra, and I think we did just that. It's it's great. Now it has airlift airbags, so we can tow with it. Mm-hmm. Has Diva race springs, King shocks. Um, it has, uh, uh, SDHQ bits, like so many good bits from SDHQ. Um, I make nice stuff. I, I, since that, uh, now I have, um, I deleted that hood scoop. Okay. I freaking hate that hood scoop so much. It's so well, It ugly. does nothing and it reflects um, and then I all even the sun deleted, into your face. It's so stupid. And I, and I also deleted the, uh, that little fake hood scoop that's above the, I there mean, I didn't delete it. I filled it with a yeah. with a Baja Designs Edge A hundred light, so it's actually functional. Okay, you know, so so yeah. it doesn't just go no to nowhere. Um, yeah, it's it's the it's such. I love this vehicle so much. It's so much fun to drive. It's so fast. Uh, it really breaks traction super easily. Um, it's still very capable off road too. I I can't believe when I put it in four low. On the 37s, you know, I can lower them down to 5 PSI if I need to. Man, that thing crawls over. Are they beadlocks? Like I, I, yeah, they're real beadlocks. Oh. Real fuel beadlocks. I, I hate beadlocks. Oh. I refuse to ever run beadlock. <laughs> oh. Never ever. Faux go. locks? Has yeah. to be real beadlocks. And I have I have a, a two spares that we carry when we're off-roading. We have a real 37 replacement. Uh, spare that's in the bed. Which weighs like and we have a th- 130 pounds. So heavy. And we have a th- uh, a 35 that is deflated that's underneath. Because it can only fit a 35. Fit a 35 that's on a non underneath. Lock. Yeah. That's just in case. Deflated. Like, right. Just deflated. Yeah, yeah. I deflated just... a 285 down to 4 PSI and I couldn't fit it under my truck. <laughs> but but um, th- th- it. Yeah, aftermarket steering wheel because I hate that one piece yeah. molded plastic steering wheel. Um, yeah, the new the new supercharger is great because Magnuson developed their own airbox because um, 
due to the volume of air and the, the air speed of the new 2.6 liter supercharger, uh, the previous one that I had was the 1.9 liter mm -hmm. supercharger. Um, the air would move so fast through the mass airflow sensor that it wasn't able to read the volume of air. So they created their own air box, which is the one you see in that uh, photo right there. It's 50 state legal, California carb legal, um, which I have no idea how they pulled, it off, pulled that off. It's amazing. Um, because it's truly a real 500 wheel horsepower yeah. on their dyno. You know, um, that's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just the best truck. I love this truck. We chased the Baja 1000 this year, which the, the Baja 1000 this past year was 1300 miles. And this, this truck did about 800 miles down to the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And then 800 miles back without a beat. You know, it, no, no problems at all. They just ran like the top. And it was a salvage title truck. That I bought for twenty four thousand dollars. It had twenty thousand miles on it. Um, it's a forty four thousand dollar truck without a title. That's how much title. Yeah, and I, I now I don't. I think I I totaled it up. How much the the whole build cost? Don't do that. <laughs> I, I totaled every bit up. I totaled it all up, and I don't know what it was. I think it was eighty five thousand. Yeah. Sounds right. I had a video on it. Yeah, sounds right. But anyways, it. I mean, but, but what else, I mean, besides yeah. like cutting into the bed and doing long travel and stuff, there's not, yeah. I don't know. I think, I and think that's it for a street going truck. To replicate that, that, that with a V8 elsewhere with a blower is like Raptor R, which is a lot more than 85. I mean, I'm curious. I, I potentially think that the new Tundra could be built to something similar, mm -hmm. but you'd have to really do a lot of extensive modification to get 37s to fit on it. I think. Do you um, watch? Mm -hmm. There's a guy named Kai. His YouTube page is Tinkerer's Adventure. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've no. heard of him. You should watch him. So he is a. Uh, he also has a long travel FJ, um, and he's deep, deep in the in the Toyota world. But he has. A uh, long-term TRD Pro, which incidentally is the TRD Pro that I put 800 miles on, and he's mm. going to do some stuff to it and, and see where it can go and what it's capable oh, of. Oh, cool. like like a like a um, just the Toyota V6. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just yeah. a oh, stock cool. TRD Pro. Um, do you know how many how much horsepower people have made out of that? I have now? absolutely no idea. I haven't been following it that closely. Just. I could imagine it, it being something where you can really get a lot of power out of it. Yeah. it hey, you, rem you, you reminded me of something um, when you mentioned uh, the Land Cruiser Museum. You know, it's some, something that I brought up to them that they don't have, and I don't know if they'll ever get it. Uh, and I don't even know if I put it in the video when I did uh, my video with Cruiser Kirk. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I mentioned, I was like, hey, you guys don't have any Toyota... Uh, Land Cruiser technicals. You know what I'm talking about? No. As in, like a, with a, a machine gun in the back of it? Yes. <laughs> or anti or anti aircraft. Yeah. Surface surface to air missile, anti aircraft. Uh, I'm like so glad that's in my Google search cannon. now. <laughs> You're on a list. Like they don't have anything like that huh. there, and that is. Like they have almost every other kind of Land Cruiser. Yeah. I feel like they have the Mega Cruiser, they have ambulances, fire trucks, they have mining vehicles, they have TV station, like you know, that Japanese TV yeah. vehicle. Mm -hmm. They have everything. But I'm like, I don't see any Yes. Why don't they have that? <laughs> Come on, Kurt. You got an opportunity. <laughs> well, because it's and I know. It's, I know there's not a lack of them either. Exactly. It's one of the things that the vehicle is the most known for. Yeah, there's... Yeah, I'm going to... Right? <laughs> Even well, an enthusiast has to appreciate this version of the vehicle. Right, I mean... Still kicking. I bet, it, yeah. <laughs> I bet if they put it in the museum, it would be 
one of the top five most photographed versions in the in the building. Assuming that yeah. it's not behind like a no touch rope, you know. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, they could fill the barrels with cement. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't have to be whatever. functional. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be functional. Yeah. But I say, yeah, I say, I, I think it would be kind of cool to see. Put paintballs. How many willies are like... running around with Madu's fifty cals <laughs> mounted on them? Like, why not? Kurt, let's go, bud. I would tip him over. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, just just before we go on the tangent of tangents there, going back, uh, Magnuson, if you're listening, I would like a supercharger for the 4.6. <laughs> let's get on that. Oh, 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 you mean for the for GX? GX. Yeah. Yeah, I mm-hmm. I would love one. I actually, if if they came out with one, actually, I did. Honestly, I did mention it. Let's let's, let's poke the bear. I, I told him I was like, look, I told him, um, just from from my experience, I'm like, think of how many of those engines exist. Yes. Oh yeah. And and mm-hmm. also think of how many people are building the GX now for overlap yep. or an off road Be- and or utility. And I told him like. I was just at the factory and they made this many already. And this many are in existence in the yeah, world. Known entity. You know, it's, it's, it's not just the G, the Lexus version. It's the Toyota, Pro, no, right, mm-hmm. the Land Cruiser Prado. Uh, thing would sell really well. Thing would sell in Japan, in Australia. In Australia. Um, it definitely. would sell everywhere. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and that's, I think my only, complaint about the gx if i had to have one complaint is that um it just doesn't have as much power as my lx 57 it could use a hundred horsepower like 400 yeah would be a real nice 400 would be very very healthy Mm -hmm. um yeah i'm low boost i i just I'm such a big fan of force induction. I get the <laughs> the, the NA thing, how NA is best or NA feeling or whatever. I just force induction, all the things. Well, a supercharger done right feels like NA just with yeah. the throttle actually, you know, does 25 <laughs> to 40% more than it otherwise would. Yeah. I wonder the only sorry, I was Googling while you guys are no, kind of tangenting you're, there. Like it's trying uh, to see how I much the only four point six supercharger costs for, for vehicles. It, it's eight thousand dollars, I know. No, I wasn't I wasn't going there. I was when we mentioned Australia there, I think they have fairly restrictive forced induction laws on higher displacement engines. Um, oh really? What's yeah, higher? that's why I, define higher. I think I don't think it's I don't know the exact stuff. number. But like that's why the LS swap isn't actually very popular down there because then they can't add force induction to mm. um, those engines. They can go NA. Mm. Um, I, f- I feel like I saw that on My- Mighty Car Mods video too. So that could uh, I mean, hopefully I, those laws have updated. Yeah, that's a possibility. But there's still a crap ton of those things what, in the world, what, even if we no, eliminated what, Australia. What, no, what they do to all vehicles in Australia is not even no. It's there's no, they don't care. <laughs> I'm sure they won't care. <laughs> okay. I mean, like the, the, outside of I, I, metro areas, it doesn't seem like anybody's really checking on anything. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even talking about that. In the city, nobody would care. I've no, never been, the, so I'm going to trust Larry. Uh, yeah, ditto. The GTRs that are running the streets there that have two, sometimes 3,000 horsepower. What? They don't care. Yes. Yes. Uh, many a times we were driving on the streets with these guys that have 2,500 horsepower in their GTRs and they're just normal ass street cars with all four wheels, uh, all four tires slicks, complete oh drag my slicks. God. And we're just driving on the street and like just they're just normal ass cars. And I'm like, how is this legal? They just don't care. That's. They don't care. I don't even I don't I don't think I can comprehend what that is. I, I saw a GTR with drag slicks on the back today and just driving my kid to baseball practice. And I was kind of like that. Wait, that guy's got. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> OK, cool. Like yeah. now 
he was pulled over on the side of the road. So I'm not sure what that was about, but he was by himself. But I was like, those are tri-. I was like, ooh, GTR. Ooh, Drax sucks. He's waiting for somebody. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of horsepower. God yeah. damn. Uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> So how three, was uh, you said two or three thousand, Larry? I didn't hear that wrong. Yeah, they they <laughs> they build some crazy. Well, see, the 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 um, what I figured out is they've just had these vehicles since the beginning. Okay, you know they they a lot of these vehicles, including the R thirty two, were actual Australian market cars. Mm-hmm. Like they were available from the beginning, so they had this much time to develop the RV engine and everything else. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty incredible. That's so fantastic. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to shoot much off-road stuff in Australia yet, but I think that's something that I'm going to have to explore next time I go. You should do, you should ping our buddy Dan Grek and try to do some of those like most remote road in the world type things, like canning yeah, stock route cool. and all that. Fraser Island. Fraser. Ooh, Fraser. Yeah. Fraser would be a good spot for Larry with all those like trucks that go down and that's super tight. And... Seriously. I love that. Yeah, that'd be cool. That. Actually, Larry, I have names for you after the show. I'm not going to give them all here, but I got, we got my, I'll send you the Australia <laughs> list. <laughs> we, we, we have some, we've got a couple of guys, but I'm sure Larry's got more guys than we got guys. <laughs> Man, so uh, before we end up making this the marathon of shows, what uh, what's twenty four look for like for you? What do you have planned this year? I uh, I, I want to get behind the wheel more. Um, that's kind of my promise to myself. Um, I I waited seventeen years to get into driving to to learn how to drift. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I watched other people have fun for too long. And I'm gonna drive. I just just before here, oh, just before talking to you guys, I just came from Studio RSR. They're finishing up my roll cage nice. in my 350Z, so I can tandem. For which car? I've been practicing my 350Z. I've been practicing drifting for about two years now, and I think it's time to you know take safety uh, seriously because I really want to start running doors with people. Mm-hmm. And um, you know when you're Look, because I've tandemed for till this point, knowing that if somebody hits me in the door, it would hurt a hurt. lot, you know. So, and I and now if I do when I have my cage, then I can actually go max speed, and also I can um, just run doors all day without really worrying. Uh, so, gonna gonna focus on that. Cool. I'm getting my GR86 Time Attack car sorted. Uh, right now, it's at Evasive Motorsports. They're diagnosing a couple nice. little things with it, and I'm going to try to drive that as much as I can, uh, as uh, as many events as I can. Um, it's it's such a fun vehicle to drive. Mm-hmm. I love it. It's the best. It's it's the best. I mean, aside from there's just so few drivers' cars now that are affordable, and that is just one of the few. You know, besides the Miata. Dude, I don't really know what else is real wheel drive and yeah. cheap ish. Mm, uh, nothing new, hard, other than yeah, nothing. No, nothing. nothing. I put eight hundred miles on a GR eighty six last summer, and it was oh my god. I still think about it like every day. Toyota cut me off from a GR eighty six because we went to the GR Corolla launch, mm. and they're like, "All right, open track, free track, you know, drive." whatever GR car you want, Supra, 86, and Corolla. And uh, I, we were open lapping um, uh, Utah Motorsport Campus. And I tried all three cars, and I'm like, I like the GR86 the best mm-hmm. because I can push it 10 tens, get sideways, no problem. So much fun. Yeah. Rolling my own gears. I was in that car so much, they're like, you're cut off. You're not allowed to drive that anymore. They're like, Larry, we don't have enough cars. They're like, Larry, we don't have enough tires. (laughs) They're like, drive the Supra or the Corolla. I both other manual turbo. Yeah. Not NA. Turbo cars. 
you unlimited track time. And I'm like, I just want to drive the GR86. Dude, it is perfect. It's great. Like, it's really good. I, I'm. It's just enough power. Love the Supra. It's just yes. enough power. I can't get over. I have a thing about visibility and being able to have like good peripherals and like not feeling claustrophobic. And I love the Supra in concept. If they made a Targa or convertible Supra, game over for me. But the 86 just feels so natural in the seating yeah. position. It's so good. I, it's it, it is really the modern day S two thousand. Um, if Honda still made the S two thousand, hmm. it would be a great competitor to the GR six. You know, it's like similar horsepower uh, and similar um, handling dynamics. I, I drove the BRZ yeah. version on Road America and was just like, that's the only thing I drove oh. more than once at that event. I was like, I will go back to that car. Like it was so, and I drove the Super, but I. Because you can push it. Yes. 10 tenths, 100%. You, you can be at the limit and it's the most fun thing mm -hmm. ever. And you're not being dangerous. You're not overdriving the car. And it's just the best car. Like, I just love that car so much. Um, yeah. So In my, mine is super, supercharged. It's HKS. Of course supercharged. it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, of course, force induction guy over here. Yeah, right. Um, so it makes makes 300 horsepower it, it just makes it that much more fun good number um such a such a good car stop tech brakes um just as the most bolt-ons that i could on this vehicle you know i just did everything that everybody makes what because i just I it, it, it's kind of like the limit of my building skill mm -hmm. honestly you know i, I try I, I i'm very candid about the fact that i don't know how to weld or like do real fabrication. Mm -hmm. But what I can do is I can do bolt-ons and I love doing it. It's so much fun. Like I just love working in my own cars and doing as much as my skill will allow me mm -hmm. to do, you know. Yeah. What tires that... are you running on it? Like, sorry, Chris. Uh, AO, AO 52s, only AO okay. 52s. As you say, right. that's why the GR is Yokohama. on the ground. So it can be driven. Why? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it can be driven. No. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. My 240Z is go undergoing engine bay restoration right now at uh, Z Car Garage. Um, yeah. I, pretty much most of my cars are getting worked <laughs> I like, um, I'm sensing a theme. Does Larry yeah, have travel yeah. upcoming? <laughs> yeah. My, my, um, my R34. Um, oh, you want to talk about breaking news? Um, I'll break one piece of news on on, on your show um, about a project car. So my R34 GTR, uh, I I made a video about it last time I uh, was in Japan, and I talked to You're with it. Um, yeah, when I I was talking to Garage Ishida about repainting it, and I was telling. On my YouTube video, I explained that I'm. This is my path with the car. It's gonna get sanded down a primer. It's gonna get resprayed, and I'm gonna take it to the U.S. Right? I'm gonna import it to the U.S. And maybe I'll have Tommy, Effia, redo the engine bay or whatever. Plans are com have completely changed. <laughs> now, uh, we're gonna do a like a serialized garage Ishida restoration on the car okay which means the chassis will get taken down a bare metal and it will get dipped and everything and it'll have his like updated sealed shock towers okay uh which will last another lifetime mm -hmm. of the car um we did a haggerty episode on garage Yoshida, and uh he he did say that he would have time for me to do a respray and that's honestly all I was expecting to be able to do with it because of how, how busy he is. Uh, and, but now he, he just felt that um, it needs to be a serialized car. So I'm going to work with him on going to Japan, documenting this process of it essentially being built into a new car, wow. which I'm so excited about. <laughs> uh, I'm all, I've been gathering parts for it for a while. I have parts for it that are in the car 
that I've been buying from Nismo Omari oh, and wherever. Like I've just I just had this in my mind of it getting at least just resprayed. So I I got all new like bits and pieces, um, all new badges, all new like little interior trim pieces, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. Thinking that I know it's going to be hard to source all this stuff. So um, yeah, I'm really 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 excited about it becoming a new car. So which is is just I'm beside myself to be able to to work with him in this capacity. So in April, I'm going to fly to Japan to watch him disassemble it and cut up the shock towers and everything. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah. under the knife. That's so cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. holds your breath and yeah. like it's, you know he's doing the job. But it's like oh shit. Oh, oh, it's just so crazy because uh, to me, you know, that car has become legendary status. It's the the aura of that car is just. It's beyond what it actually is. Mm -hmm. It's so good, it, but it's so crappy compared to modern cars. You know, it just, it drives like an old car. Um, it's not even that fast at all, but it just, the aura that surrounds it and the lore that it has and the, the look and the feel is it, unlike any other car. Mm. It's so good. Yeah. And the emotion that it gives to other people when they see it, even in Japan where it's from, people just go crazy over this car. Yeah. And I just, I love it so much. It's just, it's everything I always wanted in what a vehicle represents. I feel like it's formative. I feel like for so many automotive guys, GTR is in the formative part of it. Yeah, it's just, it's just, I don't know. It, 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 like I said, it, uh, or like we mentioned before, I don't know if it would have got to this point if the 25-year rule didn't exist or did. Mm -hmm. But then again, you have to remember, this is it's just so sought after in Australia and all these countries, the UK, um, where it came as a new car. Right. You know, so I well, don't know. It's, it's, it's great. It was 10 years ahead of everything it was competing with. And kind of a vision of what they thought 20 years into the future of tech could be, you know? And like, yeah. it's not fast by R35 standards, but in right. its era, no. you know, like, yeah, in its era, it was great. And now and that's a really good point. You know, now pretty much most cars are turbo, right? Yep. What is it? I mean, other than even a pedestrian, normal car is a turbo car because it's more efficient it's more right more power yeah. mm -hmm. so i don't know coyote it's, it's, coyotes are it right like they're them just standard I mean, what's ls left? what's left five sevens you know, two liter miata GT3. uh two four brz gr86 yeah yeah it's it seems like everything else it is, is turbo. yeah and, it, and or, it's or, the beginning of that. Like, it's the performance yeah. things with force induction. Like, it's just, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. It's fantastic. Yeah. Cool. I appreciate you guys so much, really. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, thanks, Larry. Thank you for oh, joining time to talk us. To you guys. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah. I, I just appreciate, especially during that time, that was such a rough time for all of us. I appreciate uh, the individuals that figured it out, you know that was still keeping busy and I can't tell you how many podcasts I did during that time. <laughs> and I enjoyed all of them. Yeah. I enjoyed them so much, you know? Yep. Sweet. You know? Yeah. Car guys will always find something to talk about and we all share the same communal. That's why cars and coffee exist. Crazy obsession. It's just a bunch of guys staying around talking. <laughs> That's the <laughs> joke, the right? That's yeah. the joke. God. You spend all day, every day, you spend all day at the track or you spend all day at a car meet and then you go to dinner and what do you talk about? Of course. Car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't stop talking about cars. It's, it's ridiculous. It, 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 for the people yeah. in this world, it is, it's everything. Yeah. There's a, uh, awesome. One, uh, one, one reel I shared with my guys the other day, it was like people who don't know what, like people who don't know anything about Land Cruisers and it's, I don't even know which character it is. And he's like, so you got, or it's Jonah Hill being like, so you guys want to talk about like, weather like what <laughs> what do you guys want to talk about <laughs> right yeah nobody wants to talk about weather yeah like, well the cars. weather affects wheeling conditions so 
It's very nice here in the Midwest right now, so I'm not going to complain about the weather. So it's cold here. <laughs> it's got, nice weather's coming, Ross. That's what I'm trying yes, to tell you. Like, uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Anyways, sweet. Uh, Thanks, Larry. So, thank you, guys. I'll wrap it up real fast. Rate and review wherever you listen to podcasts. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Larry is everywhere. Haggerty YouTube. Larry Chen YouTube. Still some autofocus is on Hoonigan. Uh Drift Photos Twitter. Larry Chen Photo on Instagram. Did I miss anything? Larry Chen Photo.com. That was just pure memory that time. That was all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Prince. Larry Chen Prince.com. That's the one I forgot. Prince. Um, I, I print them all myself. I sign them all myself. I'm the only one that's allowed to touch them because they mean so much to me. It's a piece of me that I'm selling to people that want to follow me. And um, yeah, I always like to give out little trinkets like uh, stickers, postcards um, for the next 100 or so people that order posters. I have keychains um, that uh, my buddy Hang from Thailand made for me. So I, I just stuff them into all of the packaging. And uh, yeah, definitely appreciate everybody who, who supports me in every way. Cool. And saying the Clan Kana photo is still on there. That's the... <laughs> my my son asked me, who are, you, who are you talking to tonight? And I was like, the guy who took the photo of Ken on the edge. And he was like, okay, yeah. I got that one. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. History. History.